Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Uh. Radiant team ban. Dire team ban. <laughs> Radiant team pick. I speak for the trees. Dire team pick. Faceless Void. Radiant Team Pick. Welcome back. It's our second series of the day. Ray versus TNC. Filipino matchup that will determine which of these two teams is going to be going into the semifinals to potentially face up against, uh, well, what is most likely Fnatic, but could be Execration is... Uh, is our other semi-final. I'm Capitalist. I'm joined by Mott Pax once Ten again. Mott Pax, remaining. you uh, you sign here with uh, one of these two teams. Five Obviously, we got the remaining. chance to watch Rave a little bit, but TNC they've shown a lot of strength in the past. Reserve Do you have a time. favorite here in this uh, in this race? Uh, it's a little bit tough, you know. Um, I know TNC they've definitely been showing some good promise lately. Of course, always very much on top of the drafts. They love to mix stuff up. Uh, one of the teams that first brought in the whole PL mid versus the uh, Invoker as well, and someone that MVP often look towards when they're going for their own drafting, um, and someone like who they want to always build off of. So both teams they kind of had an easier first round matchup. One, uh, well, actually for TNC it was it was quite a while ago. I was thinking about their their series versus Rex, but either way, we saw the old. Uh, Ray versus Warriors, that went pretty well for them. And uh, over in Epicenter, I believe TNC were actually knocked out by MVP Phoenix. So nothing to be ashamed of. They've been doing just fine lately. And uh, I don't. I think it's pretty exciting because these are two of the big teams that I think have bigger followings outside of the region compared to a lot of the other squads. So uh, we should be getting uh, quite a match up here. And we already have OD faceless void for Rave. Five seconds oh. remaining. Dyer what do you think they... Uh... Wait, wait, wait. Was it first pick OD or first pick Furion? Uh, Furion first pick. Oh, okay. What do you think they picked up Witch Doctor? Dire team. I don't know. Picked it against a, a Faceless Void and OD and with the Furion. Like, it. Uh, I, I, I really don't think that. Witch Doctor, I don't think, is as strong a support as some people like to really put him out to be. Uh, I really do feel like he is a little bit more focused, and that's usually against some of these matchups like Furion and Chantress Chen, like ones that where the paralyzing cast can actually cause a lot of havoc Five in the laning phase, or it's specifically with some sort of combination like we've seen with the faceless board. Reserve yeah, I think um, for TNC, the reason they value it is that they'll often go into these kind of crazy push styles, and this opens it up for them. Like, you can see the Jakiro ban out from Team Rave. They've kind of got that on the mind because of it, so that might be the best possible reason. Probably yeah. the best best current five to support that style, um, with Dazzle kind of being out of flavor right now. No, I guess that is true. I didn't, I didn't really think about that. So the Bounty Hunter and Jakiro going to be banned away by... Rave, we have a Klinx and Gyrocopter taken out by TNC. Lion. Oh, well, there's that line though. I think that would have been really solid for TNC up against the OD. Someone to try and lock this guy down, deal with him. Um, with the line picked up as well, that does still mean like Oracle's left in the pool if they want to go for someone else to keep that OD a little bit more secure. Like Lion can lock down one of the enemy cores, Oracle just making sure that your OD is always up and swinging. So lots of nice options left for them, and on the other side, though, TNC haven't revealed too much. They only have the Nature's Prophet, and they managed to snag up a second phase in Invoker. All right, I would be uh, rather pleased with that, I think. Yeah. Invoker versus OD. I think Rave are you know, kind of acceptable. They left the Invoker out there for a reason. They know the OD can win that matchup. The... 
question is going to be whether or not TNC are able to pick a good roamer to actually threaten the OT, because that's the that's the real threat, right? Is that when you have a Furion on your team, and you pick up a four position roaming hero, say like Earth Spirit, who's still in the pool, you're able to get that kind of initiation on such an important hero like the mid OD. The Invoker is already a hero that can capitalize on those kind of ganks, and then you throw in a Furion, a, a TP in as well, and there's just no chance the OD can live through that. Yeah, and this is the point where TNC finally have to make some sort of a deci uh, like decision about their lineup. Are they going to go for something like a Spectre, and we're going to go like massive global kind of strat going on here, or are they going to go for something that's a little bit more aggressive, like that Earth Spirit, to try and get a pick, force into a little bit of a push in the tower, um, head into a core maybe, like your Juggernaut with the Healing Ward, if they really want to apply this pressure. They still have the spend to fall back on if they think that they're going to be interested in like hanging back a little bit now that there's this Ember Spirit trying to snipe some sort of a timing where maybe he's only gotten into a battle fury or something and they can push in but ember spirit looking like it's going to turn out to be a very nice pickup as they will in fact go for that chen so the hard heavy push the plan here for tnc and yeah i think that's a solid ban in this situation yeah it's what what other pushers are left pretty much jug i think would be the big one they could go clinks oh okay bando didn't it yeah they banded out earlier is sven still in the pool yeah. Five seconds. I like spend with um with Chen. War crying, those creeps just don't die. Reserve time. Yeah, I think Sven or um Juggernaut will be totally fine here. And they'll have their pick as Ray will be going back for some sort of a fifth roll support over there. Uh what about you know what in, in TNC style, what about like a Beastmaster, like Safe Lane? Huh? Team pick. Omega push. Or even a safe lane Furion. Yeah, you can do it that way too. Now, do they go Winter Wyvern? Is that too much? I don't know. It's kind of good. Nice range against the Witch Doctor. Good against the Chen, obviously. Going to be a good fifth roll here. Kind of like it. Sets up Chronosphere. Sets up OD. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Winter Wyvern's actually the pick, but with their Spirit left in the pool, that's also going to be an okay thing to go for. Your spirit making on on Rave's team. And see. Do they just go standard? Are they going to be boring, TNC? I don't know you'd be very boring a lot of the time. Five seconds remaining. I could imagine something coming up. What about like a Drow? Is that too crazy? Um, against no, Earth Spirit actually... Ember. I, I think Drop. it's uh I think Oh it was first enough. banned, my mistake. Uh, <laughs> they they were super serious, but I'll even have Drow. I just noticed the moment there, so it'll just right. be joke. Oh it is going to be pretty standard. Juggernaut versus O D. I don't know. I I am I feel like Ember Spirits is a hero that is able to fight know relatively early on the faces void and again faces void od accommodation is obviously going to be the most important thing because they need some like heavy heavy damage to cut through all the sustain that tnc is going to have right between healing ward chen mech witch doctors voodoo restoration so they need some like real heavy hitter and that's obviously only going to be found really in the od and maybe the finger of death. Most of the time when we're we're talking about the the way that this game is gonna go down and how this push lineup is gonna head into raid as they try and defend, Ember Spirit is going to be past that that fifteen minute time where he's really strong at just fighting in general because of his skill set, but he's not going to be there in time for the Battle Fury Daedalus build yet. So his damage is not going to be all that threatening and easily outdone. Uh, by the heels of TNC. So you really got to get something that can cut through that. And the only two heroes really is OD and the Lion. Everything else is kind of slow damage over time. I feel like TNC has won this draft. Um, and the only way that Rave is going to be able to win this game is off of some sick OD plays. 
Yeah, I feel like they've definitely opened a very big window for TNC. Like the way that their heroes interact and how they're going to be hitting those timings um, before anyone from Rave is like mega online, they have an extremely good chance with Witch Doctor, Chen, Juggernaut, like Nature's Prophet. They, it seems like you're expecting them to just close out this map really early on, choke out the Battle Fury Ember Spirit if he even makes it into that. But so the, the eventual high ground, like that's where things could certainly go disastrous. If you're looking into like Chronospheres and obviously OD Lion, there are some major potentials for an immediate pick off onto someone like the Invoker, the chase down with the Ember Spirit. So TNC, they have to play a clean game, but they've set it up so that if they do so, it's going to be very difficult for Rave to actually determine the outcome of this game. Right. Our bounty room is going to be split between our two mid laners, Teehee on the Invoker. The we have Rior on the OD. Looks like they're going to be starting off with um, an aggro duel line of the Juggernaut and Witch Doctor to try and threaten the Ember Spirit as much as possible. And they're going to give the Furion a rather safe lane matchup against uh, a Faces Void, which is pretty easy. I, I like this choice by them. I think, um, especially with the safe lane Furion, knowing that he can rotate, gives you a little bit more credence to any sort of aggro tri lanes or aggro duel lane. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're going into an Ember Spirit and a Lion, too, who are two great, like, four-roll heroes, but in this kind of a situation, they're not exactly the best tri-lane supports. It's going to be pulling the attention off your Invoker in the mid lane, which he needs all the help he can get, obviously, because he's up against an OD. So ensuring that they're going to be busy up top instead of in the mid lane is the perfect scenario for TNC. Juggernaut, Witch Doctor, two amazing heroes here, and then AU is basically going to be playing, like, Enchantress <laughs> and uh, roaming up top to help uh, via some early creeps. He hasn't gotten uh, a real good creep for destroying the mid lane just yet. Actually, he's got a Seder Torment here, so you can see he's setting up for it. He's gonna yeah. let this Centaur die and uh, take the Seder. Way better. So yeah, they have no way to set up for a, <laughs> for a Centaur. Yeah, so now how does this tri lane deal with it? They're gonna be really low on regen once this Seder is done with them. They may even, if uh, Lion gets out of position here, they may even give up first blood. Yeah, they have a ward, so they know that Earth Spirit's rotating mid too. So Tihi can just back up, and now they can get very aggressive in the top. Last 120 damage on the Jo. Life and Cast is gonna bounce back to Jo, and they may actually be able to kill him. Yep, the blast comes out. Au. Man, Takes that coin that flip though. 50% <laughs> chance to die, and he loses out on that one. Unfortunately. Go over. It was a good sleight of fist dodge, too. Yeah, it was. Uh, he had the first one. Bottom lane, Rappi is like taking the heat. He's got the poor man shield up now, though, so I can imagine that his HP pool should be a little bit more sustainable. But uh, overall, Sam Mage, I mean, this is his hero. Like, he loves Nature's Prophet. It's the one that they'll always pick um, really early on into the draft just because of how potent it is for them. And I'm very much expecting him to set rotating up here and grab this tower extremely early. And it's so rare that you see this tower knock down, I would say, pre like 10 minutes, but they are definitely going to be able to do with this game if they'd like. This is a nice angle from Ninja Boogie, though. This is not somewhere you'd be expecting a, a uh, Earth Spirit this early, but looks like he doesn't even feel like he can capitalize off of it. We'll wrap around here by the Earth Spirit, seeing if they can catch Sam H. Speaking of wraparounds, AU was getting ready for that up top as well. Good impale. They still got a lot of damage on JL, forced him away from the Queep Wave. This means he's just missing out a lot of CS. Look, they're healing the Seder. That's how important this is right now. <laughs> this is like ridiculous. It. Oh, he got a siege wagon. He kills the Seder in exchange for pushing down this tier one tower a bit faster. All Sam H has to do is just play passive and TNC have themselves uh, a free landing phase win. Yeah, this is totally ridiculous right now. It's not even four minutes and they've lost the top tower. Jo, 
I mean, this is his role, though. He is like the mega farmer. This guy loves the hardest heroes that you can give him. Any mages, clinkses, anything like that, where he just wants to hit creeps the whole time. Like, he doesn't play that aggressive style if he's on, like, a clinks or something. He's not in the enemy jungle. He's just hitting some creeps. So if there's anyone that you want in this kind of a situation, I definitely think Jo's the one to try and pull this out. But he's going to have a very hard time getting up in towards that battle fury. Especially if Sam H heads in towards an orchid. Like, this is going to be very similar to our last game. Ninja Boogie, I'm gonna smoke up with the lion here. Right. Do you can they can finally find get anything? something here, though? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they could oh. probably get the guaranteed kill on Furion, I believe. That, that shouldn't really be an issue in my mind. But I think a better question is whether or not they're gonna have to dive too deep to get that kill, and they're gonna be turned around on by, uh, by TB's miss. Ninja Boogie doesn't oh, hit disaster. the holder. And the thing is, Sam Ace can just leave like at any moment where he feels now. Now that he knows they're both here. Oh, it's top lane. Oh, God. The paralyzing cast just keeps on destroying J.O. Energy Small Sun is so good. This guy, he's like 14, eh? He's an extremely young and new talent, but is, he's been he performing 14? very well. What's that? Is he actually 14? Yeah, he's like 14 or 15. He's super young. Damn. I I, I, I thought he was like 16. But Jesus. I, don't, that I think that's someone else. I feel like he's like even younger. Maybe wow. I'm wrong though. That's impressive. It's okay. I'm sure all our massive Filipino fan base will correct me. They got my back. Bottom tower. Uh, he's still living mid. This is crazy. Like, Rira's almost level 7, which is to be expected. He's totally dominating this matchup, but everything's going fairly well for TNC considering the situation. Again, uh, they just keep the static laning phase because they know they want it. They just play a little bit passive on some of their other heroes. Nice centaur stun. Oh my god, this is brutal. Yep, they lose the heroes on the top lane again. And, again, and they're also pl just playing passive, right? The Furion just lost his 2-1 tower. Who cares? He didn't get caught in the process. None of this is worth Rave's time. This trade-off, unless they're getting hero kills. Yeah, and it comes down to the hero investments as well. Like, you have an Earth Spirit and a Lion that haven't gotten a single kill yet at almost 7 minutes. Which is not something that you're generally drafting. Um, at least, especially not your Earth Spirit for. He has had almost zero impact, which is pretty crazy, but it just goes to show like the way they drafted on TNC, they were totally prepared for any sort of like aggression that would come out, even though it was a fifth pick Earth Spirit. Yeah. So they have the Chrono. Obviously that's probably their best way back into this, some sort of mistake by TNC. But now like as these towers start to slowly dwindle, it's gonna have to be the mid lane, which will be your best opportunity in terms of like dire side advantage and protecting your tower. Some sort of a play like from the trees or because other than that, the aggressive wards are coming out. They can see Rappy. They know where he's farming. And Raven is now getting solo farm at the bottom lane to make up for obviously some uh, experience differential because they were keeping heroes at top lane so much. Our Juggernaut is a little bit under leveled, but because of all the space they created at top lane, taking tier one and tier two. He is going to probably have a good 5 or 10 minutes of farming bottom now. Ninja yeah, Boogie? Ninja oh! Way too deep. Man. He like, he like went for a solo roll. I don't even know what he was hoping for. I don't know either. Don't know either. Oh, look at it go. Oh, cast. Is, oh, wow. Did not get it that time. Could have been big. Yeah, he's been pretty lucky on them so far, but no such luck here. All right, well, Raffi just abandoned mid, but it doesn't look like they want to push in any further. Just fire him up. They still don't have the Midas yet on Teehee, so I'm sure he'd like to kind of uh, back off a little bit and get that done. Yeah. Spending some of his time in the jungle, making him a little bit harder to gank. Meanwhile, Drums is going to be coming in soon for our our OD. He is uh, still top of the net worth, uh, despite the tower advantage going the way of TNC. I guess Fort Spirit's worth more than regular creeps. I actually don't know. 
It is one That's of those things that would he wrecks them. Yeah, because he's like the same CS as the Juggernaut. They have they've taken two towers. Hey you. Gonna be found here. Nice double kick there for Ninja Boogie. The paralyzing cast is gonna be able to come out. Looks like uh Block down both Derp and Rior. They'll probably lose Winter G Small Sun. Oh, they no. shouldn't to block they you. We have the opportunity to just leave. Fury comes in with a big ultimate. They still have not finished off Winter G. They had to actually drop Rior's ultimate in order to get that kill here. And they're all so low. Unfortunately, there's no one from TNT that can capitalize on that. They were so focused on pushing down the mid lane that they couldn't actually rotate over in time to punish Ray for that kind of uh, that kind of situation. Still, though, they got the uh, tier one at mid. Very important tower to be taken. <laughs> I, just, I just noticed the AU didn't go for this early minus. Is he gonna find Derp here? Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, they got him. Nice double impale. Deny? Possibly? Okay. He's gonna go this for the neutral. Huge. We right clicked. Oh, nice but the steal from AU. Not today, buddy. Not today. <laughs> he just pings the hog All right, they just warded to kill me. I wasted their ward, guys. No. Is Lion ever going to be able to get that deep into the Radiant Jungle to counter it? I'm kind of feeling like the, his chances are going to be a bit limited. Yeah. At least uh, AU, the last two games I cast him, he was doing Chen, he went Midas both games, and they lost, so... Kind of glad to see the mechanism coming out here. I, I think his experiment's over. He's done with that. Yeah, no, no more of that. Oh, we're, we're done. We're done with that one. Plus, then. plus, plus their push lineup is so heavily timing focused that uh, yeah, I don't think you would have delay either the mech or the guardian greaves. I don't think either one of those items should be uh, overlooked. <laughs> Sam H, on the other hand, has gone for one here. I mean, he already has drums, though. He skipped the Midas for now. Or rather, he skipped the phase boots for now to go into that Midas. And uh, that should be all right. It'll help him kind of hit that, like, 30-minute 30, 30 timing, probably, where they've closed at all the towers, they're farming up. Maybe the Battle Fury will be done at that point, but he won't be into any sort of a secondary tier item, so he'll have an Orchid and halfway into probably his third item at that point. See what Tiki wants to itemize and do. He's got that Midas. I don't know if he'll also be building drums. Might get a blink or something to help out with their like chase down and initiation off these towers. But you don't really want to like commit into a blink or something and then just be closing out the entire map and just farming the whole time. PNC will take the tier two at bottom. They may have to give up the top lane. That'll be fine. Reorg's playing it pretty far forward. Knowing that he's got Rappy to fall back on the Chronosphere. Realizing Cass does actually chase away some of Rave. Long enough for them to get that tier 2. Rave jump forward looking for the Chronosphere. Rappy couldn't find it. Now he's going to be Centaur stunned. They actually could get uh, a lot of damage on him. Rave and turn, maybe? Yeah. Alright, alright. That was way too deep. And now the double sun plus the OD ultimate. They're trying oh to finish off Raven God. before he can get off the Omni Slash. He does get it off though and actually finish off Rappy. And he goes way off in the background. Unfortunately, he does not have spin, so he can't just spin TP out. Lion ends up going down, but all these heroes are taking so long to kill Raven that they may be in trouble as Teehee comes forward with AU, or maybe not. And OD has stolen a lot of intelligence. He is a very dangerous heavy hitter right now. I can't believe they only ended up with one kill. That send home was disgusting. Oh, did, who did he get the send home on? I think it was Winter. I couldn't tell if it was the Winter, the Nature's Prophet at the time, but I believe it was Winter G Small Sun. He was at like 10 HP and got sent back to the fountain. Wow. Oh. And all the chaos of that fight. It looked so good for Rave, though. They'd come in so deep from TNC, but just between the mech and obviously the Hand of God. Here. Oh, they didn't even have the mech? What? How How on earth did that take so long to kill them? I was positive they had mech. No. Oh. Not quite. Not quite. I guess Voodoo Restoration is a good skill. Yeah. He's got the efficient level too. I think in a matchup like this though, I, I do believe you max it out. I don't think you care about Maledict at all. Even though people always will be like, oh, but it's mana inefficient. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that much. Yeah. It's, it's just uh, all about getting the heavy heals into play. 
There's no value in like maledict too much this game. Alright, Rappy. They Chrono and 30. Chrono. This is going to be very difficult. Fury ult. <laughs> this is such a damage. weird engagement. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, let's go again, guys. Maybe it'll be different this time. All right, there is definitely no way that TNC are going to be bothered enough not to complete Roshan here. So now the next test is going to be initiating at the right time and getting Apes. Got the Chrono. Oh, they have the Chrono now. They go on to Winter G Small Sun, but at the same time, I'm not sure what's happening. A little bit of freeze still, though. Roll in from Ninja Boogie. They are going to have the Paralyzing Pass bounce around. Looks like Derp is going to be dying. Uh, Earth Spirit on the other side. Raven still looking very healthy. Has his Omni Slash ready to go. Doesn't want to blow it on either one of these two heroes. They will finish off Roshan and Aegis will be taken. Oh, disaster. By Teehee. Ember Spirit suicides in on in there. I'm not sure, like, my game just kind of froze up right after the Chronosphere went down, but... It's just a sustain. Like, that whole time you're thinking, all right, we'll just keep poking into Roshan. We'll see how weak they are. How much has Roshan lowered them? But the problem is it's 15 minutes in the game. They have Healing Ward, they have Witch Doctor heals, and they have the Seder Aura just constantly regenerating them. They took zero damage from Rosh. So you come in with this Chrono. All those things are still active and going. They couldn't kill a single person. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Look at that Earth Spike. That's how many units they have. Double Satyrs rolling. Damn. Omni Slash sticks on to Rior. Raven, a little bit lucky with that one. The Alacrity damage allows him to blow up the OD. Second time in the last minute. Now they're going to be able to get Elena Brax. Raven can do nothing to stop this. TNC just looks, uh, I Look mean. Look at the focus. Like, they, they don't care at all about these heroes. Yeah. They this obviously is completely insane. That's it. They are obviously one of the best C teams that are running pushes, and that doesn't come as a surprise that they're able to beat Rave with a push lineup like this. Especially since I really feel like they, they won the draft so heavily. Again, the damage over time from Rave. Heroes like Ember Spirit, uh, Earth Spirit, and, and Faceless Void actually not bringing damage, just disables. Uh, all that that the small amount of damage that they're able to consistently output over time is just undone by one voodoo restoration and a mech. Yeah, I mean, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of expecting like a broodmother or something next game for Rave.